Dear Susan, I hope you don't mind, but I think clearer when I am typing. So this letter is being written on my computer. This is a difficult letter for me to write because I know how much you think of me. And I want you to know that I am flattered that you have such a high opinion of me. Susan, I value our friendship very much. You are one of the few people on this earth that I feel I could tell anything. You are intelligent, beautiful, sensitive, understanding, and possess many other wonderful qualities that I and many other men appreciate. You will, without a doubt, make some lucky man a great wife, but unfortunately, it won't be me. Even though you think we have so much in common, we are vastly different. We have been raised in two totally different environments, and therefore, think totally different. That's not to say that I was raised better than you or vice versa. It just means that we come from two different backgrounds. When I started dating Laura, I knew our backgrounds were going to be a problem. Right before I graduated from Auburn University in 1990, I broke up with a girl, Allison, that I had been dating for over two years. I loved Allison very much, and we were very compatible. Unfortunately, we wanted different things out of life. She wanted to get married and, ha and have children before the age of 28, and I did not. This conflict spurred our breakup, but we have remained friends through the years. After Allison, I was very hurt. I decided not to fall for anyone again until I was ready to make a long commitment. For, for my first two years in Union, I dated very little. In fact, I could count the number of dates I had on one hand. But then Laura came along. We met at Conso, and I fell for her like a ton of bricks. Things were great at first and remained good for a long time. But I knew deep in my heart that she was not the one for me. People tell me that when you find the person that you will want to spend the rest of your life with, you will know it. Well, even though I fell in love with Laura, I had my doubts about a long and lasting commitment. But I never said anything, and I eventually hurt her very, very deeply. I won't do that again. Susan, I could really fall for you. You have so many endearing qualities about you, and I think that you are a terrific person. But like I have told you before... There are some things about you that aren't suited for me. And yes, I am speaking about your children. I'm sure that your kids are good kids. But it really wouldn't matter how good they may be. The fact is, I just don't want children. These feelings may change one day, but I doubt it. With all of the crazy, mixed up things that take place in this world today, I just don't have the desire to bring another life into it. And I don't want to be responsible for anyone else's children either. But I am very thankful that there are people like you who are not so selfish as I am and don't mind bearing the responsibility of children. If everyone thought the way that I do, our species would eventually become extinct. But our differences go far beyond the children issue. We are just two totally different people and eventually those differences will cause us to break up. Because I know myself so well, I am sure of this. But don't be discouraged. There is someone out there for you. In fact, it's probably someone that you may not know at this time, or that you may know, but would never expect. Either way, before you settle down with anyone again, there is something you need to do. Susan, because you got pregnant and married at such an early age, you missed out on much of your youth. I mean, one minute you were a kid, and the next minute you were having kids. Because I come from a place where everyone had the desire and the money to go to college, having the responsibility of children at such a young age is beyond my comprehension. Anyhow, my advice to you is to wait and be very choosy about your next relationship. I can see this may be a bit difficult for you because you are a bit boy crazy, but as the proverb states, 
Good things come to those who wait. I am not saying you shouldn't go out and have a good time. In fact, I think she, I think you should do just that. Have a good time and capture some of that youth that you missed out on. But just don't get seriously involved with anyone until you have done the things in life that you want to do first. Then the rest will fall in place. Susan, I am not mad at you about what happened this weekend. Actually, I am very thankful. As I told you, I was starting to let my heart warm up to the idea of us going out as more than just friends. But seeing you kiss another man put things back into perspective. I remembered how I hurt Laura. And I won't let that happen again. And therefore, I can't let myself get close to you. We will always be friends, but our relationship will never go beyond that of friendship. And as for your relationship with B. Brown, of course you have to make your own decisions in life, but remember, you have to live with the consequences also. Everyone is held accountable for their actions, and I would hate for people to perceive you as an unreputable person. If you want to catch a nice guy like me one day, you have to act like a nice girl. And you know, nice girls don't sleep with merry men. Besides, I want you to feel good about yourself, and I'm and I am afraid that if you sleep with B. Brown, or any other merry man for that matter, you will lose your self-respect. I know I did when we were messing around earlier this year. So please think about your actions before you do anything you will regret. I care for you, but also care for Susan Brown, and I would hate to see anyone get hurt. Susan may say that she wouldn't care husband had had an affair, but you and I know that is not true. Anyhow, as I have already told you, you are a very special person, and don't let anyone tell you or make you feel any different. I see so much potential in you, but only you can make it happen. Don't settle for mediocre in life. Go for it all and only settle for the best. I do. I have I haven't told you this, but I am extremely proud of you for going to school. I am a firm believer in higher education, and once you obtain a degree from college, there is not stopping you. And don't let these idiot boys from Union make you feel like you are not capable or slow you down. After you graduate, you will be able to go anywhere you want in this world. And if you ever want to get a good job in Charlotte, my father is the right person to know. He and Connie know everyone who is anyone in the business world in Charlotte. And if I can ever help you with anything... Don't hesitate to ask. Well, this letter must come to an end. It's 11.50 p.m. and I am getting very sleepy. But I wanted to write you this letter because you are the one who is always making the effort for me. And I wanted to return to friendship. I've appreciated it when you have dropped me nice little notes or cards or the present at Christmas. And it's about time that I start putting a little effort into our friendship. Which reminds me... I thought long and hard about getting you something for your birthday, but I decided not to because I wasn't sure what you might think. Now I am sorry I didn't get you anything, but you can expect something from me at Christmas. But do not buy me anything for Christmas. All I want from you is a nice, sweet card. I'll cherish that more than any store present. Again, you will always have my friendship, and your friendship is one that I will always look upon with sincere affection. Tom.